Hey there and welcome in. Hope you're having a fantastic day. In today's video, we're gonna be watching some of the cringiest training videos of all time. Training videos that are so bad, they actually ended up being pretty good. And it blows my mind how some of them were approved in the first place. Like, do people actually learn stuff from these videos? The first video we're gonna hop into today is a Chuck E. Cheese video on how to be the mascot at Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> Now just right off the bat, I'm gonna just say this. I don't know why anybody would ever voluntarily decide he wanted to become the Chuck E. Cheese mouse. Is Chuck E. a rat or a mouse? I've never actually thought that through in my head. Is he a mouse or is he a rat? A mouse can be cute, but a rat is disgusting. Whoever is in this mouse suit is absolutely killing it. He's doing some dance moves. He's looking like he's having a great time, but really underneath that mask, he's probably just like, oh, why didn't I stay in college? Yeah, get it, Chucky. Get it, Chucky. Yeah. Hold up. Wait a minute. What is this guy doing to that nose? Whoa, go easy there, Chief. It's my first time. You got to take me to dinner first. Hey, Don, that was great. You really made Chucky come alive. I know what made Chucky come alive. It's that nose polish right there. You made it look so easy. All kids love Chucky, so that's the easy part. Okay, that line made me uncomfortable. While in the Chuck E. Cheese costume, always be aware of the children around you and exercise safety at all times. That seems like a pretty obvious thing to say, right? Don't bulldoze the children that you're there to entertain when you're in the mouse costume. Can you imagine if Chucky just came out and just started bowling over all the children, just freaking plowing them over? Children flying everywhere. That would be a little bit scarring, so it's a good thing they're training these guys not to do that. To clean Chucky, 409 or similar cleaners should be used on the face, hat, and toes. Be sure that every time you're given the opportunity, take Chucky's severed head and then clean it off with 409 cleaner. It is very important that Chucky has a well-groomed appearance. We would hate if for any reason this rat looked like, you know, a, a rat. We want our mouse to look cleaner than any other mouse. While cleaning the costume, visualize what your performance will consist of. I feel like this guy's visualizing something very different than what this training video is trying to put off here. It is extremely important to keep in the best physical shape possible at all times. Not only will you feel good, but you will be able to give the best performance as well. Look, I get stretching before you do anything physical, but at the same time, why did you stretch after you got in the costume? Why couldn't you just stretch before you got in the costume and then be in the costume after? One of Chucky's major roles comes during the birthday party. Since this part is so important, you might want to do a rehearsal on the floor before the store opens to get your bearings with a costume. How much rehearsal is needed to get a cake out to a child for their birthday? Look at him, just flailing his arms around. He's really excited. There is nothing thing that I want more on my birthday as a child than to go to Chuck E. Cheese and then have my birthday cake brought out to me by a scary guy in a mouse costume. Remember, if you're ever in trouble, use the timeout signal and determine whether or not you will be able to make it to the regular exit door. Wait, what? You mean to tell me that this is a regular occurrence enough that you needed to put it into the training manual? That if somebody feels the need to pass out, they need to do the timeout signal? Can you imagine how traumatizing it would be to all the kids to watch Chucky pass out and then get dragged into the back by an employee? That really invokes the confidence that I'm looking for before I start this job. Now that we best know how to be Chucky at Chuck E. Cheese, our second video today is going to teach us how to avoid sexual assaults at Kmart. Remember Kmart, the store that doesn't exist where you live anymore? But let's see how Kmart once trained their employees about sexual harassment. Take a look at the following situations. See if you can tell what behavior is considered inappropriate. We could literally be talking about anything, but whenever you have a video where you stick a guy with a voice like this in it, I'm willing to listen. Tell me more. But super sorry, I gotta focus. Kmart is quizzing us on whether or not we can find the sexual harassment in this video. All right, let's watch. Jennifer, if you've got a minute, I'd like to go over the paperwork. Oh, sure. You think it was a good plan? Yeah, as I said, I was quite impressed. Good, I was hoping you would be. Okay, okay, I may not be a detective, but I think I might have spotted our first sexual harassment. It couldn't be that he literally just grabbed her arm without asking, could it? I'm gonna pass this quiz, Kmart. You can't stop me. You don't think I'd offer that kind of plan for anybody, do you? You're special, Jen. Really? And you know what else? I think we should start talking about putting a plan together just for the two of us, if you know what I mean. Now, I'm not 100% sure where the sexual harassment is in this video, but it could be one, that he grabbed her arm without her permission, two, that he stared at her in the most obviously creepy way possible, or three, that he basically came on to her and insisted that they have a separate plan for them two to end up hanging out. He's definitely not referring to playing ping pong in their free time, that's for sure. But either way, it's very clear that it's sexual harassment because the laser sound effect that takes us to the next scene. See, without that 1990s laser sound effect, we would have no clue if it was sexual harassment or not. But now Kmart's stepping up their game even more. I don't think you guys are going to be able to figure out where the sexual harassment is in this video. Hey, what's happening, baby? Okay, there's immediate sexual harassment here. That wasn't very hard. Maybe maybe they'll make it more challenging here in a second. Oh, is there something I can help you with? Can you help me? 
You have no idea. You got any plans after work? How about you and me having a couple of drinks over at the Rendezvous Club? Guys, I'm having a hard time spotting where the sexual harassment is in this video. It, it could be the entire video. Kmart could be pulling a fast one on me. Look, if you have something to purchase, I'll be happy to ring it up for you. Otherwise, I've told you I'm not interested. I'm sorry, please. Oh, what is that creepy smile at the end there? What was he trying to do? Discount Chris Rock is creeping. But if you still are not 100% sure what sexual harassment really looks like in the workplace, Kmart wants to spell it out for you in the most plain terms imaginable. Oh, what a great way to start the day with two of the prettiest girls in the world. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay, so my creepy meter was going off for the last video, but my creepy meter is all the way through the roof for this one. This old man's at the end of his rope. He does not give a damn what he says at work anymore. How are my two best girls doing? Fine, just fine. Wonderful. You know, it does an old man's heart good just to be working around such pretty young things all day. It keeps the juices flowing. Look, old man, we don't want to know anything about your juices, okay? Let's keep your juices to yourself. And why do they pick such descriptive words for him to say? Keeps the juices flowing. Young things like you. Now, our last training video of the day you've probably seen before. It's the Old Country Buffet. If you haven't seen this video in your algorithm, your algorithm probably sucks and you need to work on that. We'll begin with your second shift duty, greeting and serving guests. Good evening. Fight enough to eat today? Boy, I'll say. Well, that's great. Would you care for some hammer beef? A little both, I think. All right. This guy is probably one of my favorite people of all time. He was told that he needed to act in this scene, and then he ended up becoming one of the biggest memes of all time. At other buffet-style restaurants, guests often feel they're on their own. Once they've paid for the meal, no one pays much attention to them. Honestly, when I'm in a buffet, I don't really want people to come up and talk to me. I've chosen the buffet experience for that reason. I want to go get as much food as possible. I'm already embarrassed by the fact that I'm going to eat three or four plates full of food. Having that that awkward encounter when you go back up for the third time and try to fill your plate with mac and cheese and barbecue is something that I don't want when I'm at a buffet. And from the looks of this video, it looks like he doesn't want to do it either. Try asking a question the guest can answer in a sense or two. You might ask something like this. Is it still hot out there? Or this. Did you catch a game last night? Or this. Have you tried the lasagna? It's my favorite. And it's made all that much better with all of the PowerPoint level flipping to each sentence. The carver already has to carve all the meat. Don't make the man have to talk to people too. He already doesn't want to be there for his eight hour shift. Don't forget to hold quick conversations with our younger guests too. Children often play a big part in deciding which restaurant their parents visit. So start conversations with children by saying something like this. What grade are you in at school? Or this. Have you decided what dessert you're going to have? Or this. Do you like hot fudge sundaes? Did your dad ever come home from getting the milk? Please don't make fun of my big nose again. If there's one thing all these training videos have taught me, it's that most of these companies have no clue how to make a good training video. What I do really appreciate is you stopping by to watch all these videos with me today. We just hit 1,000 subscribers last week, so I'm feeling very blessed about that. Thank you so much for every single one of you who has subscribed. If you are new here, I really appreciate you watching today's video, and I'm really glad that you stopped by. But if you did enjoy this video, there's a video on the screen right now that the YouTube algorithm thinks that you're gonna like, so that means you should probably click on it to let them know that you like my stuff. Until next time, bye-bye.